just saw a film, a Judy Garden film called Litty, Little Nelly Kelly. Um, <laughs> Peanut gallery, stop smirking. Uh, the name Little Lady Kelly comes from a vaudeville uh, musical from the 2030s, so, and it has nothing to do with that, <laughs> except that they had the, the the song, they had the, that song, they had Judy Garland, they had the Singing in the Rain, because it belongs to Arthur Freed, who, who wrote them. Little Nelly Kelly song was written by uh, George, uh, George M. Cohen. Who was a really big uh, writer of that time? Um, he was still around, only just. The other song they have is uh, the that so Little Lily Kelly is from by Cohen, and uh, Singing in the Rain is by Arthur Freed, who happens to be uh, who happened to be a songwriter in the in the twenties and thirties, but now is a producer of a large chunk of the MGM studio. He has its own group, and Judy Garland is in that group, and Gene Kelly is in that group. But Gene Kelly is not in this movie, but they have so they have a Judy Garland, they have a couple of songs, and they have a an idea, I suppose, um, and they put it all together in this jalopy. <laughs> we have a jalopy, an actual actual jalopy. <laughs> It is a... I don't know... I don't understand why this movie exists. Other than they had Judy Garland and a couple of songs and nobody else. They had one one guy who can sing, but he's singing alt in, in an older style. He's a young guy, but singing in an older style. Whereas Judy in 1940 is singing in a newer style and it's more popular. But you can't change the guy's singing because that's how he learned it. He's, 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 he's doing the light operatic style, which is going out, definitely. It was very good, big in the 30s, but it's going out of style. So um, so it's not a musical, even though Judy Judy and this guy sing a couple of... Um, they, they sing the, basically, they sing the same three songs a couple of times. <laughs> um, and they want to tell a story uh, about Irish immigrants. So suddenly Judy is Irish. The, the first section of the movie, the first 20 minutes, is set in Ireland, in the studio in, in back lot of Hollywood, Ireland. So everything's very pretty. Lots of flowers in Ireland. If you go to Ireland, you know, there's, not, there's no such thing. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like that. So nice, pretty cottage. They didn't have those because they were so poor. They couldn't, they left it, lived in really dilapidated. They were cottages, but they were dilapidated. So this is, this is Ireland as it never was. Um, father, uh, father and daughter live in a cottage. Judy plays the daughter. Father is, they never say it. But they show it a lot. He's a wastrel. He's a waste of space. He drinks. He makes uh, her do all the housework chores. I don't have no idea what money, where they get any money. I don't think they have any money at all. So she sort of plucks out food out of the air and gives it to him. And they are too poor to exist. Um, being a pretty girl, there's a there's a lad uh, looking at him at her. Her name is Nelly. His name is is what was it again? Jerry Kelly, so that's how Nelly Kelly, then the Nelly Kelly comes oh, into it. Oh, it's already a smooshed up name. <laughs> it's a ship name. <laughs> no, Nelly Kelly becomes Nelly Kelly because she marries Kelly. Oh, okay. And uh, and Kelly and she is very not enterprising as such. She's willing to go wherever her guy goes, uh, but he says, "I want to go in America, go to America, because." Better in America, and it is. This film is from 1940, and it's harking back to an earlier time. But it doesn't tell me when it is. I had it, it took me half the movie to figure out when is this set. Is this set in the famine period where uh, oh, a lot of Irish went to 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 the states? The answer the answer to that is no. Um, so. It, for a while there, with the bad costumes and the the, the, the nondescript gent men, men's outfits, who they haven't changed in, a, in not significantly in a long time, and her outfit as as a woman is completely wrong anyway, because much too nice for for Ireland's uh, bad clothing and not enough fashionable to to take any period in. So it's not good clothing. So it's just it's just I think the entire um, film. They just 
get whatever the, the wardrobe lady hands to them. You want something that's nondescript I Irish? Oh, here, I have, have something with some checkers. You, you go wear that. <laughs> and... Uh, so I don't understand what, what, what period this is. It's anywhere from 1870 to 1930 is where it is. It's set, it, it's, and it, the film is from 1940. So exp take what that you what you will. They, um, the her father is against it, against marriage, against uh, against the boy, against uh, America, against anything he anything this boy stands for, including America, he is against, and. Uh, she marries him anyway because she cannot stop for her father. I mean, she loves her father a lot, but she cannot stop for this guy. And she goes to America and then the the f father shows up late for the wedding because they haven't told him. He, he, has to, he hears about it in the pub. Um, and then also sneaks onto the boat to America and ends up in America with them as well. And I, I had so many of this guy, some Hobson's Choice uh, vibes. This this guy uh, who basically messes up the his daughter's life. Um, and she just perseveres anyway, very softly, trying to be nice to him. He, she keeps feeding. He keeps not having a job. This guy has no job. This guy is known for not having a job. This guy is a waste of space. And the film never actually says it. They run around the, the matter, the white elephant in the room, all the time. Um, what happens when a man and a woman get married? They have a kid. Yeah. What happens, and it turns out to be the 1920s, when a man and a woman get married and have a kid, go to the hospital, occasionally it doesn't work out. So, Nellie dies, leaving a little child behind, which they also named name Nellie. Um, and you have... Uh, a different situation in the 1920s um, of of the yeah. Are they then going to repeat? Is the father going to repeat? What? Yeah, he actually uh, the moment he realizes that the the that Kelly actually gets in a midwife and a a. a uh, lady to take care of of the of the child because he's working he's actually working like a policeman he's actually climbing the ladder of he policeman must, he must work he must work because so the, there's nobody else to take care of the kid and grandpa is not going to do anything because grandpa never does anything because he's a waste of space so he gets in a lady and grandpa kicks the lady out uh, that's the only time in the entire thing he actually steps up for anything he takes care of the baby however they completely skip then the next uh, 18 years to a grown-up Nelly because now they have Judy Garland again because Judy Garland in 1940 is actually 18 years old. So she was mom and mommy Nelly. She's also child Nelly as an 18-year-old. Um, and they don't show how much or how little he actually did. Uh, they just skip that. Um, and the fact that... Nelly the younger and Nelly the older is played by the same person makes it very I understand what they're trying to say it's it's life repeating itself but it made it very abstract for me um because now the guy who was Nelly the older husband is now Ellie the younger's Nelly the younger's oh, okay. father and there is another bow comes around for this Nelly the Younger because she's a very pretty girl with a very pretty voice. And and Grandpa repeats the same cycle again of I don't want this boy, I don't and he on the entire time that Nelly has been growing up, he refused to talk to the father, to to, to, to Kelly. The entire time. And Nelly the Younger is trying to get him to make nine yeah for 18 years she's been trying her entire life she's been trying to get uh, grandpa to to do anything and <laughs> they fudge up the ending because uh 
this guy is stubborn in, stubborn in him himself into be, dying alone, basically. And they don't want that for a nice ending, so they change. He changes his mind at the end and gets a job. Gets a job, but it's a job of his choosing. And in the end, he accepts that Ned the Younger has a new bow. And I don't think that's realistic. This this movie is is so unrealistic. In uh, it, it's. It's a bit of candy, but it has too many serious elements to to get away with just being candy. Um, I mean, I, I immediately have the question is, what is the movie trying to say? Uh, is it trying to talk about Irish immigrants in the 1910s Yes, a little bit. America? That's the only thing they did a little <laughs> bit right, but I don't think they really understood it. What The only thing that is very clearly put down is the moment that Kelly, uh, the father, uh, when they when they arrive in, in America, uh, he wants to uh, get, a, get a job. He wants to be a policeman. He always said, I want to be a policeman, because that Irish who went over always became a policeman. Um, but for that, uh, he didn't realize, and he wasn't too fussed about it, but he didn't realize he actually gets get, uh, citizenship first. So he does that, all of that. Uh, apparently, if he wants to get on, he has to get citizenship. That's what this film is saying, telling me. Uh, wants to be a policeman, police, uh, wants to be a policeman. First, he starts off as a guard for something else. But, so he gets a lot of, of good stuff on, on his resume. But to be in a police academy, he has to get citizenship. That's what the movie's uh, peanut teller <laughs> calorie is telling I'm me. No, I'm shaking my head here because peanut. I did research on this and it's not true. But okay, 1940. This is what the movie is telling me. In order for him to get on his ladder of going to be a uh, police chief, is citizenship, and he does that. Maybe he does it. Maybe they don't tell tell it to me in the right way, and he, he does it because he wants to. But he takes citizenship. He they he actually he sits down. And reads to Ned uh, the Older the uh, Declaration of Independence, um, just out, and we get the flag, and we get we get the whole thing. But this is 1940. This is 1940, and they are they are no, they are either heading for a war or already already in. Well, America wasn't in it in, in 1940, but parts but of the England world was. parts of the world yeah. were, and so they were pushing. They had been pushing. Uh, Judy Garland films in particular had been pushing nationalism for a long time because uh, a couple of years earlier they wanted to get in uh, F F FDR for for the, the New Deal. And they did these same units who made this movie, made those movies. And later she is actually, I think in 41, she's in, an, in a, just a musical thing with Mickey Rooney again where they do a fundraiser for orphans in in England, and they actually get that. It's the only serious part about that entire movie is that bit where they actually make radio contact with England and have some people talk, and that's that's this unit. So pushing that, yes, I understand that. So he he they they actually show him. He 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 reads the Declaration of Independence to uh, Nelly the, the older, and I thought at first that he was going to get citizenship and maybe she not, but then the. Just right after that, they stand up and do the whole let's swear. Turns out Grandpa, grandpa who grumbled that he's not going to be part of this, is somewhere at the back doing it also, because whatever Kelly is doing, Grandpa is doing also. <coughs> because jealous. Um, doesn't matter, he also gets citizenship, so he gives up Ireland. And this is from a guy who has been was on the boat ranting, I'm just going back to see off my daughter and I'm going back to, right to Ireland because I want to be buried in Ireland and I do not want to be... Uh, uh, America sucks and all that. And I, he didn't say that, but yeah. Um, so he stays. What he says, and even what he does, is not what he actually wants. And that's annoying. That uh, annoys me. I mean, you can you can be contrary for for maybe in the, 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 a couple of days or a week or maybe even a year, but eighteen f and years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, the the what makes the movie halfway watchable is the charm of all the actors involved um judy garland is she's 18. you can't you can't expect her to be a 
dramatic masterpiece at 18. But she does, she, what she does is she does, she does write. The chappy who plays Kelly, the father, the the uh, the husband of the Kelly, the Ke of of Nelly the the older and the father of Nelly the younger, uh, is really good because he has to first play a young man who is wooing his girl and then play a police chief basically for the entire thing for father slash police chief and he does that really well. The chappy who plays the new bow is uh, I think he was just hired for the for the voice the, the operatic voice he's got a really nice voice he gets to to use it as well out of fashion soon but it's on the cusp here so they don't know if Judy is going to be the, the new fashion and they don't know if he's going to go out so that's why that there's a lot of instances if you go back where you have Judy against an, 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 an operatic type voice because that's the older one and they don't know if it's going out because lots of people still enjoy that. Um, there is a parade <laughs> because parades are cheap, and I think parades that not so much in the in, in in the states right now anymore because they are just cheap. Uh, you just need lots of people walking, and then you have a parade. But the, she walks in the, in in the police police section of the parade in New York. Oh, it's all set in New York, of course. As a jalopy, as long as you know that this is a jalopy, it's fine. Uh, it's an hour and 40 minutes of, of fluff. The, the costumes, in, when they're not in the 1940, are meh. But the 1940 stuff, she wears some really nice pretty dresses. Uh, she wears a... a an eve a couple of evening dresses and some day stuff and that's nice um but basically you watch this for the charm of of uh, judy garland and judy garland is really nice but she's 18 so don't expect the world here uh because it's not the the, the director it's just any old director of, of it, it, it's in black and white in 1940 so it's the side unit it, it, it's just a side movie, a filler movie from from this uh, from the Arthur Freed unit. But would you say um, this movie is about the Nellies, or this movie is actually about the guys in her life, the men? It's not. Life? It's not clearly enough about anything. Yeah, that's the problem with this movie. So yeah, it is about Nelly. It's about the guys a little bit. It's about about the flag. It's about being Irish. It's about the grandpa. It's about working. Uh, there's a there's for a mood board it's interesting because uh, Nelly the younger tries to get grandpa into a job and gets him under false pre pre pretenses on a job site and he does not want the job so he starts saying things like hey are you trying to make me make me break break a uh, uh, strike line or something like that implying union breaking of a union of, of a union um, union stuff so they 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 take these things like the parade and the union stuff and ireland and and police chief and uh, uh taking t taking the citizenship uh exam which may turn out to be not even necessary all this just like like a little elements they put in it's sort of a mood board more of of 1940s irish in new york slash what they at the old country, sort of. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't it, know about it this one. To me, it's more about the um, immigration experience, and um, I think it's appropriate to have the citizenship uh, completely spelled out and shown because it's not shown enough. Um, what my research was about was the 1970s and, and earlier than that. Um, and it showed that it, was, it wasn't that you needed to be a, an American citizen in order to be in uh, the police force or in the uh, military. But if you went into the police force or in the military, that would facilitate an easier way to get your citizenship, which may be what they were trying to say. It's not how they presented it. Conclusion is that, yeah, meh, 
Judy Garland is would, nice. Would, would you recommend somebody to watch this? No. And if you're a big <laughs> Judy Garland fan? Yeah, yeah, but then you watch anything. If, uh, you're very, if you really want to hear about the plight of the um, uh, no. immigration way. No, of there's, the no there's no there's there's no, no much plight because the, the original Irish section, which is like the first 20, first 20 minutes, it's a it's, uh, stylized, beautified Ireland, so it's not nearly as bad as, as all that. <laughs> There, there's, it's just that he wants to go and she wants to go with, she wants to go where he wants to go and grandpa was wants to, to drink in the bar preferably on somebody else's dime <laughs> so his dime left for America and he needed to follow the dime <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> wow so yeah does it, does it say anything about mooching uh, no. relatives it doesn't make any uh, value judgment about how grandpa does things and it should have because grandpa has been mooching off uh, the family for 18 plus years um, um, and that's why they couldn't make a proper ending because the ending would have been really really dreary and bad because he would have ended up alone and they didn't want that so they gave him they they made they changed his personality just for the ending, <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's bad writing. It's just plain a bad writing, and and I don't think that some of these actors uh, the production deserves bad writing. Writing as bad as this, so, and uh, that is my opinion, and um, sticking to it. So, 